There is currently 20 aftermarket parts in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. These are attachments that fundamentally change a weapon. Some of them can make weapons super overpowered, whereas other ones can make weapons total garbage. So in this video, we're going to take all 20 of these in game, pack a punch every single one of them and compare them against their base version. Then we're going to rank them on a tier list. That way we can find out what the best aftermarket parts are to use in Zombies. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to unlock that subscribe button. So starting off, we've got the Jack Raven kit, which is an aftermarket part for the MCW that converts it to 0.300 the benefits of this are additional rate of fire additional mobility and handling a buff to damage at close range and a benefit to hit fire and tax stance spread however the negatives you get with it are reduced bullet velocity at range and you're going to lose out on some recoil control as well let's go ahead and pack a punch it and now that it's pack a punch you can see we only have 80 rounds in our magazine that's because we only have the 40 round mag on it an additional negative benefit of this aftermarket part is that it blocks the 60 round mag so you can't have the big boy mag which is pretty important but if i'm being honest the other downsides aren't that bad yes you get additional recoil because you get less recoil control but this doesn't really have much recoil to begin with here it is with the aftermarket part um the, the recoil is almost non-existent yeah maybe at farther ranges you're gonna have some but when i'm playing zombies i'm not usually killing zombies at a crazy far range this is usually about the farthest range i'm gonna kill them at and the recoil is extremely controllable even there Ooh, duck and weave and as for the other negative less bullet velocity and less range once again if i'm playing zombies I'm, I'm usually playing zombies up close and personal so that's not gonna be that big of an issue and it does extra damage once you're close range also you get a benefit to the hip fire and the hip fire is shredding but in the tier three zone we're treating this like an smg being up close and personal and just aiming at the head and it is i mean it's frying all right okay mega you want to go down so bad i will try it against you all right the raw damage on a mega abomination isn't that great we are we have put a lot of bullets into this man and he is yeah yeah this is a weapon you'd have to pop the eyes to kill him with because just hitting him with it normally is very very minute damage oh mangler let's see We'll just shoot him in the head for the to test it out. Not bad. All right, big horde of zombies. We take them all out. Yeah. Oh, pretty much exactly before we had to reload. Now let's compare it to the normal MCW without the aftermarket part on. So hitting zombies in the face with it. Really don't notice much of a difference. The one thing I do notice is that big mag size. Extra bullets going to be really helpful, but it does make the reload a little bit slower, but I, I would prefer the extra bullets. Oh, well, here's a mega. Break his eye. And boom. It definitely felt like this mega abomination was easier to take down without the aftermarket part. Like they feel pretty similar. If anything, just getting the extra ammo on the normal one might be better. I will say though, the other one felt a lot better to use. The additional mobility and handling it gave you just made it feel a lot faster. This one feels a little bit clunky, but uh, it, it's definitely doing more damage to the Mega Abomination. I feel like overall, maybe the base one's better because this is the second Mega Abomination we've taken down with it. And we kind of struggled when we were using the aftermarket part to take the Mega down. Overall, the Jack Raven kit is just kind of meh. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. There are some use cases where I think this is going to be better than the default version. And then sometimes the default version is going to be better. It just depends on what you're doing and personal preference. So yeah, it's an aftermarket part, but it's also forgettable at the same time. Here's the class setup we were running on the MCW. Next, we have the Jack Signal Burst aftermarket part for the Holger 556. This turns it into a four round burst, gives it a free scope and a free laser sight. The pros of this is additional bullet velocity, additional gun kick control, additional recoil control, and additional hip fire and tack stand spread. However, you get negative sprint to fire speed, negative ADS speed, and negative fire rate. Stick it in the Pack-A-Punch machine. It's saying it has less rate of fire is kind of interesting because technically yeah it's not full auto but it's a burst but i think the three shots it shoots in the burst are a little bit faster so let's test it out here is it pack a punch maxed out in the tier three zone all right make zombies disappear so one burst on a normal zombie and two burst on an armored zombie we've actually already tested out this aftermarket part in a previous video however since then it's received a pretty massive buff it's got 10 percent less gun kick 10% more recoil control, so it's going to be a lot more accurate. And the biggest change is there is a 25% less delay between the different bursts. So you should be able to shoot off 25% more bursts per minute. Well, if you don't factor in reload speed. But either way, that is a lot more bullets. Shooting it essentially 25% faster. All right, pound into the mega. Let's see how much damage we're doing. Oh, you're going to show us your eye right away? Wow, showing the eye on the first date? Oh, it does pretty decent raw damage to the Mega Abomination when you're not shooting the eye. All right, zombie single file, please. One at a time, one at a time. 
Oh, that's a disciple too. All right, just keep funneling in. Yeah, I massively noticed the buff. The buff did make this a lot better. I was not a huge fan of it. It wasn't terrible before the buff. It was just kind of mid. Like, this is kind of... It's putting in some work. You gotta be okay with using burst weapons, though. Which might tire out your hand just a wee bit. Yeah, this aftermarket part's actually way better after the buff. Who would have known decreasing the burst delay by 25% would have actually made a difference? That disciple got wrecked. Uh, at range, I uh, got a little bit of kick, but that's because the build that I've got for it's got a lot of kick. I prefer to use weapons close range, so I build my weapon with a decent amount of kick and then just aim for headshots up close and personal. However, the real question is, is the buffed version of this aftermarket part better than the base version of the Holger 556 now? So here's the base version. So obviously it's not a one burst because it's not a burst. But when it comes to bullets, it takes three headshots to take them down. So this technically means the burst version of this weapon using the aftermarket part will kill a single zombie faster than the full auto version because it can shoot three bullets quicker than this can shoot three bullets. Now, what about a big horde? That's what I'm curious about. I don't really care what it does for one single zombie. Let's see if we can use the full auto to our advantage with the normal version. Ooh. Oh yeah, this one does not kill the horde near as quick. It's killing them, but the burst version would not have let them got that close. There we go. Fresh Mega Abomination on the menu. Throw some decoys so we can get some raw damage here. Um, yeah, not liking this one near as much. Come on. No, what? Are we not going to break the... Oh, that was way closer than what it should have been. I shouldn't have tanked that. I feel like a lot of other weapons would have been able to break the eye before we took that much damage. All right, back to the burst version. The only issue with the burst one is you have to be a lot more accurate. Since it's a burst weapon, the accuracy is a little bit harder to achieve but I think the burst version is now actually better than the full auto version, as long as you're able to consistently hit headshots. And goodbye, good sir. At least while in the tier three zone. I feel like if I was in tier one or tier two, I might appreciate the full auto version more because it's easier to farm with a full auto weapon than it is with a burst weapon where you constantly have to hold it down. And while saying that, I'm not trying to say the normal version of the Holger 556 is bad. I just, if I was going to use one, I'm probably going to lean more towards the burst now. So with that, we're going to have to give this one a ranking of good. It's not game changing, nor is it the best weapon of all time, but it's very solid and good. Definitely worth checking out. This is the build I was using on the three round burst version of the Holger 556. Moving on to the Jack Heretic Carbine Kit for the MTZ 762. This buffs mobility and handling, increased fire rate, increased recoil control, and increased gun kick control. However, you get a lot less damage and less bullet velocity as well. Okay, here goes nothing. Go ahead, max it out. I don't have high hopes for this because it lowers the damage by like 22%. Yes, it has more fire rate, but I, I don't think that's gonna make up for the damage. One other benefit is with the conversion kit, you're actually able to put a 40 round magazine, whereas without the conversion kit, the max you can put is 30. So now we have an extra 10, or I guess since it's Pack-a-Punch, an extra 20 bullets per mag, but even still, I've never used this before, but it, it's really gonna have to surprise me. Lowering the damage is uh, usually a big no-no when it's this much. Okay. I mean, that wasn't that bad, actually. Yeah, surprisingly, when killing normal zombies, I can't even tell. It's, what, a three-shot headshot? What about if we take out a Mimic? Eh, not the best. All right, single armored zombie, gone. Take you out. Let's see, how many headshots? One, two, three. So three headshots. So only takes three headshots to take them out. If the normal version still just takes three headshots, this one's technically going to be better because it's got that faster fire rate. But that only really applies to normal zombies. It's a little bit slow on taking out special zombies. All right, how about you? Uh-oh. Please pop, please pop, please pop, please pop. Okay. Okay. Not in love with the damage this is doing against the Mega. It's not unusable, though. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it there because now we're out of ammo. Wasted all the ammo trying to take them out. This version of the weapon also has a lot more movement and handling, so it feels a lot smoother and fluid to use. That's an additional bonus. Let's see if the normal version's any better. Definitely shooting a lot slower, which, you know, I guess is kind of the point. All right, normal zombie. Does it take two headshots or three? One. Oh, that took three. One, two, three. So even though this one technically does more damage per bullet, the aftermarket part version is just going to be better for killing zombies in tier three because they both take three bullets to the head and the one with more ammo in the magazine and shoots faster is going to take out just normal zombies quicker. But that doesn't tell us how it's going to perform against the Mega Abomination. So let's shoot him a little bit. And it kind of feels the same. Maybe this one's a little bit better than the aftermarket part version, but probably not enough to matter. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm not liking this. I'm not liking the base version. I'm not liking it. I guess I'll eat my words. I definitely prefer the aftermarket part version of this weapon better. The one that does less damage per shot, but has a faster fire rate, which is weird because it only gives it a 10% boost in fire rate, but it gives it like a negative 22% in damage. So I just assumed that I definitely want to use the version 
that did the more damage because the, that match just seemed right. But um, I guess with the breakpoints it is on zombies, this version just feels a lot better to use. But that being said, both of these weapons still just kind of fill mid. The aftermarket part makes it a better weapon in my opinion, but being a better version of mid is still fairly mid. So the aftermarket part's an improvement, but mid. These are the attachments we were using on the aftermarket part version of the weapon. Next up, we've got the Broodmother 45 kit for the WSP9. This pretty much converts it to an assault rifle. For pros, we get additional bullet velocity and range, additional damage, additional gun kick control, additional fire aim stability. Then for the cons, we're going to get worse ADS speed, worse fire rate, worse sprint to fire speed, and worse movement speed. This is another aftermarket part that I haven't really used before, but uh, I've got a bad feeling about this one because it's only got one mag size with the aftermarket part and it's, it's 22 bullets, 22 bullets in an SMG. This needs to be doing a lot of damage or I don't see any way it could possibly be good. Please be one of the guns that get more than double the magazine size when pack a punch and, and no, it is 44 bullets, 44 bullets. That was an armored zombie. That wasn't too bad for an armored zombie. What? Okay. Mm, not taking forever to kill. It's just when you factor in the amount of ammo you have, I want to see how many bullets it takes to headshot a normal zombie. Okay, there we go. The one shot, two shot headshot. All right, big horde of zombies. Let's just keep shooting and see how far this thing will get us. Oh no. Oh, I mean, it's killing tier three zombies. That is the one positive thing we can say about it. The, the, the tier three zombies are dying. Slower than every other weapon we used. Yeah. Uh, it does have single fire as an option. What if we turn this into single fire and turn this into like a little mini DMR and it's out of bullets. All right, reload. All right, tap fire, tap fire. Eh, I don't think I like this better. I don't think I like the tap fire better. Out of all the aftermarket parts we tested so far, this is the worst. And it's not even that it's unusable. Like I'm not trying to be like, oh, this thing's, I mean, it's killing zombies. We could use it. It just, there is no reason to use this. Come on, come on, Mangler, go away. Mangler, go away. Mangler, go away. Mangler, go away. But who knows? Maybe this thing's absolutely insane at taking down mega abominations. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, you weren't ready for this, bud. It's actually better than what I thought it was going to be. Oh, it's 290, the max reserve ammo. Well, that explains a lot. That's why I'm running out of ammo every two seconds. Yeah, it's like six max, 97. I'm going to run out of ammo way before I get anywhere near killing this. I'm kind of surprised the range this has. It's really only the recoil stopping you. And this thing has a lot of recoil because the way I built it, you could probably make a long range build for this. No reason to do so, but it, it could be done. I think we already know the answer to this one, but let's compare it to the base version to see which one's better. Now we've got a hundred rounds instead of 44 and immediately this feels so much better. We even have more reserve ammo, like a decent amount more, but it also shoots faster. So I don't know if we'll run out quicker on this, but oh yeah. Oh, all right. Let's see how many headshots it takes. One, two, three. So it takes one more headshot than the other version does. But with how fast this shoots and how much more ammo you have in the magazine, um, yeah. All right, quick little mega fight. Oh yeah, this feels better too. Oh, and we can actually kill the zombies running at us while we're fighting the mega. And pop goes the weasel. So based off of what you've seen, I don't even think this needs to be said, uh, but the base version is way better than the conversion kit. I really don't see any reason to run the conversion kit and just, unless you've tried every gun in the game and you wanna try something new, it is definitely a new experience. You, you will find out some new things with that. We're definitely going to have to rank this aftermarket part in the trash tier. It's not even better than the base version of the weapon. Absolutely no redeeming qualities in my opinion. This is the class setup I was using on the WSP9 just in case there's someone out there who wants to use this. Next up, we have the Jack Thunder LMG kit for the Sidewinder. This converts it to an LMG that shoots faster the longer you hold down the trigger. It also gives it increased maximum ammo capacity. However, it gives you less movement speed, a slower ADS speed, a slower reload time and less sprint to fire speed. Go ahead and pack this bad boy. Whoa, oh, wait, wait, one more time. Hold on. There we go. Once again, this was another weapon we've reviewed in the past, but it just recently got buffed. It takes 40% less time to get to the maximum speed, or I guess 40% less bullets. It used to take 25 bullets to get to the maximum speed. Now it only takes 15. So as we hold down the trigger, you can see this bad boy shoots quicker and quicker. All right, here we go. Unleash the beast. Oh, 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 I don't have perks. Uh-huh. This should help us out a little bit. Normally, this aftermarket part has a ton of recoil, but we have a build that pretty much removes most of, if not all of the recoil. And that's pretty important when using this aftermarket part. I'm very curious to see how this performs because this was a very solid aftermarket part before the buff. So I'm assuming it's going to be even better now. I mean, it has to be, right? There's no way they made it shoot even faster, quicker, and it, it's worse. So yeah, it's, it's killing zombies, killing disciples. Now this weapon does struggle a little bit more at long distance just because I can't hit as many shots. When in doubt, spam all the bullets out. 
Maximum speed. Once you get it going, it rips. But then as soon as you stop shooting, you got to start with that slow speed again. Wah, wah, wah. Honestly, I'm not sure if I noticed the buff too much. All right, Mega, you got to go, bad boy. All right, you got to go, buddy. It's time. It's time. We're just going to hit fire you. Goodbye. Must hit maximum speed. All right, so get them together. Let's hit maximum speed in a big horde. Oh, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Although we got some behind us too. We've also got the weapon built for hip fire because hip fire works really, really well on this. Being able to kind of run back once you hit that maximum speed so you don't have to stop shooting is uh, really nice because you want to stay at that maximum bullet speed as long as possible. So obviously this aftermarket part was good before the buff. It's clearly going to still be good after the buff. And on top of that, it's just a lot of fun to use. There's no other weapon like this in the entire game that just gets faster and faster and Bowser! This one's pretty obvious, but let's compare this to the normal version of the Sidewinder and see which one's better. Now we've only got 60 bullets in our mag, and it's still full auto, but, um... Wow. Yeah, it's pretty clear to see um, this version is, is a lot worse. It shoots really slow, and it, it feels like the damage you're doing per bullet is about the same, even though the other one shoots crazy quicker. In my opinion, the Sidewinder is one of the worst full auto weapons in the entire game. It is just... Slow shooting and the, the damage just isn't there. So obviously I'm gonna say the aftermarket part is, is an all around improvement. And if I had to give the aftermarket part for the Sidewinder a ranking, I think I'm still just gonna give it good. It's a good aftermarket part, but it's not amazing. It's not absolutely game changing. It's not a top 10 weapon in my opinion. So even though it's solid and fun to use, I'm still just gonna give it a good. But regardless, it's still a million times better than the normal Sidewinder. So if you're gonna use the Sidewinder to grind camos, uh, use the aftermarket part. This is the build for the Sidewinder we were just using. The next aftermarket part is the Jack BFB. And unlike the other ones we've already covered, this isn't a conversion kit. This is just an attachment, meaning it could be used on most of the weapons in the game. The pros for this is a lot of gun kick control, a lot of vertical recoil control, a lot of horizontal recoil control. Then for the cons, we've got increased rate of detection, a slower ADS speed, a slower sprint to fire speed, and it also affects your aim walking speed. You can find this aftermarket part in the muzzle selection for weapons, and this is a pretty good one, so I recommend right-clicking and adding to favorites. That way, every time you go to make a new class and click on it, it'll be right here at the front for you. Trust me, it will save you a ton of time with how many different muzzles and suppressors are already in the game, and keep in mind, every time they add in more weapons, there's more and more of these suckers to sort through. With this aftermarket part, we're not going to pack a punch it because it shouldn't make a difference. It's really just meant to get rid of recoil so here is the base form of the sidewinder and this does have the lmg kit on it let's see the recoil on this and this is me trying to control it so that is the recoil without the jack bfb and me trying to control it here is me shooting this without trying to control it yeah a lot of recoil now let's see what happens when we put the aftermarket part on this bad boy so go ahead shoot this at the wall me trying to control it a lot easier to control now let me try to not control this let me just let it go hog wild like we did before and yeah it still gets up there but it took it a lot longer and uh I, we probably could notice this even more close range because we're trying this at an extreme example to so pick back up the one without the aftermarket part at close range we're gonna try to hit right here in the middle this is me trying to control it and yeah, did not do a very good job. Now we're going to switch back to the other one. And now we're going to shoot this target over here because that one's kind of messed up. And now we're going to try to control it. Yeah, you can see the Jack BFB makes a pretty big difference when it comes to recoil. And the downsides for this are really meant for multiplayer. The biggest downside you get with this is increased radar detection. Meaning when you shoot on the mini map, it shows you like an advanced UAV. Uh, th this is this is zombies uh th it's not gonna affect you whatsoever it doesn't matter if you show up on the radar more i'm pretty sure it's not gonna make the mercs attack you any harder or know your location anymore it does make you where you ads a little bit slower and there are a few other downsides but if you're using a weapon with a lot of recoil and you're having trouble controlling it you definitely want to use this instead of trying to waste a bunch of attachment slots to get it under control so you can save those attachment slots for more important stuff like movement speed bigger mag size I wouldn't recommend this on every weapon. I do see a lot of people where every weapon they use, they just immediately chuck on the Jack BFB. A, a lot of weapons don't have a lot of recoil in zombies and you actually get less recoil once you pack a punch. So I'd really only use it on the weapons that have an extreme amount of recoil. Let's go ahead and rank this aftermarket part in the amazing tier. It's not helpful on every weapon, but the weapons it does help on, it's game changing.
Now for the Jackhead Hunter Carbine Conversion Kit for the Rival 9, this turns it into a three round burst. The pros are bullet velocity and range, gun kick control, recoil control, and extra damage. Now for the negatives, ADS speed, hip and tack stand spread, sprint to fire speed, and movement speed. This is another aftermarket part that I've never used in zombies before. On top of that, it's another aftermarket part that just got a buff. It does way more headshot damage, like 50% more than what it used to. I mean, it makes sense. It's the Jack Headhunter. So I'd assume that'd be really good for headshots. So let's get, oh, and we turn that one. All right, all right, and spam into the horde. All right, let's kill him pretty quickly. It should be able to one burst. Oh, well, yep. So it one burst an unarmored zombie. Uh, Mangler. Ooh, not amazing. Yeah, I was really hoping this would do a little bit more headshot damage. It's not bad, but it doesn't feel as good as some of the other aftermarket parts we've been using. Ooh, seeing how there's other aftermarket parts that are burst as well. Maybe it's amazing for the Omega. Okay, it's kind of chunking. It's kind of chunking away. Lots of zombies, tearing through them. Okay, maybe I didn't give it enough credit. Okay, it's kind of slowing down on the Omega. Hmm, hmm, and my hand's getting tired. Come on, hand, you got this. Just a few more pulls. What do you mean by that? <laughs> huh? Gone. All right, tons of zombies. Let's spam in here, see how many of these we can take out. It, 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 it's okay. Let's check out the normal version. Well, the normal version definitely wastes ammo faster, but it's killing them quick. And the Mega Respawn. Oh, wow, but the um, we're, we're burning through this ammo real quick. Yeah, so I think this one's killing zombies quicker, but it's kind of a trade-off. As you can see, we've, we've already ran through the entire ammo supply, and I don't think we got enough drops to sustain. <laughs> Oh, but it feels so nice just ripping through the zombies. I've made my decision. I think the base version of the Rival 9 is way better than the conversion kit. It just kills zombies a lot quicker. And it's a burst weapon. There's already burst weapons in the game that are quite a bit better than the Rival 9. I'm not really sure why you'd want to burst SMG. If I, if I had a burst weapon, I'd prefer for it to be an AR. The only thing the conversion kit has over the full auto version is that it doesn't run out of ammo near as quickly. The full auto version burns through ammo, and I've already had to go back to ammo crates to get more ammo multiple times. However, in a mode like Modern Warfare Zombies, that's not a terrible issue to have because as you kill zombies, they drop ammo. There's ammo crates all over the map, and I would rather have a gun that kills zombies quicker and occasionally be inconvenienced to get ammo than a slower killing weapon that I don't have to worry about getting ammo with. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put this in the trash tier in my list. Even after the massive headshot buff it got, it, it's still going to be placed in the trash tier. Here's the class setup we were running on the Jack Headhunter version of the Rival 9. Next, we have the Jack Nightshade Rifle Kit, and this turns the DG58 LSW into an assault rifle. Pros, mobility and handling, tack stance spread and rate of fire. Cons, bullet velocity and range, damage and magazine ammo capacity. All right, pack a bunch of time. This is another aftermarket part I have not used in zombies yet. And that's because I always thought this was gonna be pretty mid in zombies, mainly because of the fact of the ammo size. You can only have a 40 round mag with the aftermarket part on, whereas normally you can have a 100 round mag. So it's not really got any of the benefits of an LMG anymore. At this point, it is just an AR. And damage wise, it doesn't seem to be terrible. It did say in the stat menu that it did less damage, but if you look at the detailed stat menu, it only does less headshot damage. So when it comes to body shot, it should be doing the same amount as the base. It really doesn't feel that bad when it comes to killing zombies. All right, Mega Abomination time. Yeah, I'm not loving this against the Mega. Not the worst, but not that great either. At least it's got buffed mobility so we can run away quick with it because it's definitely not killing the Mega quickly. I was hoping the reload speed would be a little bit faster. For only being a 40 round mag, the reload speed with Speed Cola, not that great. And gone. Come on, hip fire. There's so many zombies, and this just doesn't take them out quick enough. Reload. Spam again. Reload again. Reload again. And they're finally all gone. Now for the base version of the DG58. And oh, look at the 200 round mag. Look at that bad boy. And let's see how long it takes for this one to reload. A little bit longer than the 40 round mag, but really not that much longer. Like it, it's way better having this magazine. When it comes to killing zombies, yes, it shoots slower, but uh, it, it seems to be just fine. Oh yeah, look at that. It does shoot a little bit slower, but the amount of ammo you have more than makes up for it. This is gonna allow you to kill so many more zombies per minute. Although you can definitely tell you're not near as mobile with it, you are able to run a lot faster with the conversion kit, but that's why I keep a kill streak on me. When I'm ready to run, I'll pull out this and that kind of negates any sort of running effects of the conversion kit. All right, please tell me the base version is better at taking down a Mega Abomination because the aftermarket part version was not great. Yeah, this seems to be doing way better. Quick little reload for 200 more bullets. Wait, where'd the, where'd the Mega Abomination go? We are we gonna kill him? And great, he respawns. So now he's got full health again. Luckily, this one's not too bad at taking down the Mega. And the waves of zombies that come out with it. 
and down goes the mega the aftermarket part for the dg58 isn't bad it's just not as good as the base version the base version having the 200 bullets while pack a punched and the more damage is just better in my opinion so if i had to rank the aftermarket part i'm gonna have to put it in the mid tier it's usable but it just doesn't hold up when compared to the base version of the weapon these are the attachments we were running on the nightshade version of the dg58 lsw the next aftermarket part is the jack edden double barrel kit this turns the amr9 into a double barrel pros two bullets per shot obviously cons ads speed reduced damage range reduced damage and reduced recoil control back a punch there we go so since we have the aftermarket part on every time we shoot we should see two separate bullet holes so yeah we were only pulling the trigger once but if we look at the ground uh there are two separate bullet holes so if we aim at a zombie and shoot at a zombie even though we're only pulling the trigger once he'll be hit with two separate bullets hence double barrel attachment two barrels two bullets so let's go ahead and take out some zombies and um it it absolutely shreds now i already knew this one was good because we've tested this out before so it isn't really a surprise to me but uh it, it's one of the better ones in the game now this aftermarket part being super good is only a recent thing because it just got buffed when the attachment first came out it made it a two round burst instead of a double barrel weapon because it was bugged but uh they just recently fixed it and now that it's working properly it is working some zombies on top of doing really good damage it doesn't have a 44 round magazine when pack a punch it has 200 bullets in the mag you know not not throwing shade at any other aftermarket parts specifically but uh <coughs> not 44 <coughs> bullets <coughs> when pack a punch and turn around light them up like the 4th of July. Oh, and there's Omega. The cool thing is they didn't just buff the aftermarket part for this weapon. They also buffed the weapon itself. So now it does more headshot damage than what it did. And that's not just the aftermarket part. That is the base weapon. So whether you're using the aftermarket part or the normal version of the weapon, it will be doing more headshot damage. However, it's going to be doing less damage to the body. So you definitely, you want to be aiming high. You say hello. I say goodbye. But if it isn't clear, the performance of this aftermarket part speaks for itself. Let's take a quick look at the base version of the AMR9. Lots of zombies near us. Go ahead. You can see this one shoots a lot faster. However, even though it's shooting faster, it's only shooting one bullet every time it shoots instead of two. So I guess technically the double barrel one shoots faster because every time it shoots, it's two bullets, not one. But it doesn't matter. You get the point. With the new headshot buff on this weapon, even the base version's very good. You really can't go wrong either way you run this. It's really good with the double barrel attachment, and it's good without it too. Between the two different versions of this weapon, I personally prefer the double barrel one. They're very similar, uh, but the double barrel one to me is just a little bit better, it feels like. But I, I don't know, man. They're both really close and really good. And I think we're going to have to put this in the amazing tier because it is um, it's just a great weapon all around. And the double barrel conversion kit on it is no exception. These were the attachments on our double barrel AMR9 build. The next four aftermarket parts are sights. We're going to go through these really quickly. No, we're not going to pack a punch these because they're sights. There's no reason to do that. And since they're an attachment, they're not locked down to a single weapon. You can use these sights on most weapons in the game. The first one being the Cronin Entlass MSP-12. This comes with a built-in laser sight. So if you put this sight on, you're also going to get a laser sight and you can see there when we ads it's kind of hard to see because it's daytime there you go this gives you precision sight picture aiming stability aim down sight speeds and the negatives are laser visible when ads so when you ads uh enemies are going to be able to see the laser but in zombies that means absolutely nothing the sight itself doesn't look terrible but i wouldn't recommend using it because it puts a laser on your weapon meaning you can't put your own laser sight on and there's better lasers to run in zombies so i'd rather just put a normal red dot sight or a sight that i prefer more and run my own laser sight the next sight is the Entlas cast 14 the pros of this is 2.5 magnification aiming stability and aim down sight speed the negatives are laser visible while ads and this one also does come with a built-in laser sight as well uh, same thing that i said about the other site would probably never run this the site itself doesn't look bad but i would rather run my own laser that comes with better benefits and i probably wouldn't use a 2.5 zoom in zombies anyway now we have the kr in last lsj3 the pros of this are four times magnification aiming stability aim down sight speeds the negatives are laser visible to enemies very small sniper glint and laser visible in ads so yes once again built-in laser sight on this the main difference is this is a four times scope and same thing for this wouldn't run this because i want to use my own laser sight and i wouldn't use it four times in zombies we save the best for last this is the jack bullseye which gives you iron sights on whatever weapon you put it on this is what it looks like when you ads and um you actually can't see anything with this not sure the point of this it says it's supposed to give you precision sight picture um but this is the opposite of that i can't see anything when i'm adsing and i can see even less 
when I'm shooting it. So um, this one's going to get a zero out of 10. I, I don't see any reason to run this site. Pretty much all the aftermarket part sites are kind of useless. The only scenario I find using these aftermarket part sites useful in is when I'm using a weapon build that doesn't allow a laser sight. So using this conversion kit blocks the laser sight, but these aftermarket parts still have that built-in laser sight, which is going to give you that additional ADS speed. But other than this scenario, they're kind of useless. Now we've got the MCW 6.8 full auto conversion. This takes the marksman rifle version of the MCW and makes it full auto. So pros, full auto, magazine ammo capacity, movement speed, cons, damage. It says one of the benefits of this aftermarket part is increased ammo capacity, but that's kind of misleading because this aftermarket part locks you into a 20 round mag, which is technically bigger than the default 10 version mag, but it means you can't put on the 60 round mag, which, um, if there's a 60 round mag as an option for this weapon, I really don't want to be locked down to a 20. That to me is probably what's going to kill this aftermarket part. Why does pretty much every version of the MCW have an aftermarket part? The AR one does, the marksman rifle one does, the battle rifle one does. If it's an MCW, it's going to get an aftermarket part, but that doesn't always mean it's going to be great. So here it is. We've now got 40 rounds in the magazine and you know, I'll give it a fair shot. Okay, wait, no, 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 we don't have it upgraded. Okay, I was about to say, holy crap, that is so bad, but I forgot to upgrade the legendary. Okay, Woo. oh no. Um, wow, for, for its fire rate and for the 40 round mag, I was really hoping it'd do more damage. Please, please, no. Wow, Ooh, I thought it was gonna be bad, but I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. When it said it did less damage, it wasn't joking. When you put on the aftermarket part, you do over 50% less headshot damage, which is a, a lot. Maybe at range, since it's a marksman rifle. I mean, it, it does decent at range. It holds up better than other weapons. So combine the massive damage reduction and the fact that you can only have a 40 round mag instead of a 120 round mag, it's really hard to get over those downsides, even if it is full auto now. We honestly don't even need to test this, but you know, just for completionist sake, let's let's shoot a mega abomination with it. Wow. Wow, we're shooting it in its eye when it's supposed to be taking them. Oh, wow, it didn't even pop its eye. An entire magazine didn't pop the eye of the mega abomination. Pow! There we go. Using all 40 bullets directly into his eye when he's blasting all over you isn't even enough to break it. I'm, I, I yeah. Come on, 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 come on. Oh my god. It it's useless. I'm not even gonna shoot. We're just better off punching. This is gonna do more damage. Yeah. It, oh, this is so much. Thank you. Oh, there we go. That's that's the way to use this. Come on, please let us pop the eye this time. There we go. Oh, cool. And we're out of bullets. It can't even take down a mega abomination easily during insta kill. Come on. There we go. Had to take them all the way down just to prove a point. Time for the base version of the weapon without the aftermarket part. No way it could be any worse. And ooh. Okay, it's not amazing, but it, it's way better than whatever we just had a few seconds ago. Honestly, it's just the magazine size. Look at that. Reload that. Oh, 120 bullets. It's so nice. And yeah, it's not full auto, but I would rather just spam the trigger then only have 20 bullets and be full auto. This thing actually takes a while to run out of ammo. All right, big horde of zombies. Oh, wow. And this one surprisingly is actually able to kill them. Mega. Pop, oh, pop, 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 pop. Oh, wow. Look at that damage difference. Look at that damage difference. I don't even need to say it. You guys already know which version of this is better. I can't see any world why you would ever want to use the aftermarket part for this weapon in zombies. There's, unless you just want to have a miserable time, like you're having a great day and you just want to ruin it. That's really the only reason I could ever recommend using that aftermarket part. It, it, honestly, I don't even think we should put it in the trash category. It needs its own category. We need to make a new category at the bottom of the list called the Vanguard category, and that's what we're going to put it in. It's legit so bad that it broke the scale. Now we've got the Jack Ferocity Carbine Kit for the Renetti. This turns it into an SMG. The pros are full auto fire, allows for tack stance, bullet velocity range, and aiming idle sway. For cons, ADS speed, sprint to fire speed, sprint speed, and movement speed. Bada bing, bada boom, and max pack. So this is pretty much just an SMG now. Yes, this is still the Renetti, even though it looks nothing like the Renetti. I'm really glad that with this conversion kit, it doesn't limit the magazine sizes you have because a lot of the other conversion kits, it's going to make it so you can't put on the big boy magazine. But yes, even with this conversion kit, you can still put on the 50 round mag, making you have 100 bullets when packed and that mimic is gone. That was pretty decent. All right, now that I, okay. Well, um, I was going to go for the mega abomination, but that's a lot of zombies. Might as well try it out against a big horde of zombies. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. You can get it too. 
just not as fast. And now time for the Mega. Break that eye. It's actually doing decent damage to him. Okay, I don't like being this close quarters with a Mega. Yeah, open that eye. See what happens. See what happens. Huh. Weird, huh? Oh, come on. We're out of bullets. Yeah, that ran out of ammo decently fast. And gone. I like the hip fire on this too. Very nice hip fire. And obviously it's got great mobility. That's because it's like a pistol SMG hybrid and ooh. Yep, when in doubt, hit fire them all out. So as you can see, this thing's actually really strong in the tier three zone. However, is it going to be better than the normal Renettis? Because the thing about the normal Renettis is you can run these akimbo, which two usually is better than one. And since there's two of them, we actually have 100 bullets in each one of them for a total of 200 bullets. Let's see how it performs against zombies and it shreds. Ooh, aim for the head with this and it just deletes. So that's the thing. Even though that aftermarket part's really good, you lose akimbo on the Renettis and the akimbo Renetti shred. The only annoying thing about these is since they're no longer full auto, you've got to spam down the trigger to be able to do the max amount of DPS. Oh, and there's a Mega. Come on, let's pop. Oh, already popped the eye. Already popped the eye. The akimbo Renettis are one of my favorite weapons in the entire game. Like they really are just that good. They do make your hand pretty tired though. Just keep spamming, just keep spamming. By Disciple. There's a lot of zombies here. Holy. Oh, and I'm almost out of ammo too. Please tell me that some of these guys dropped us some ammo. They didn't? Are you kidding me? None of those zombies dropped ammo? Ah, there we go. 125 bullets. That'll be enough. That'll be enough. Come on. Yep. And pop. Thank you very much. He dropped a Wonder Waffle. What? I have never seen a Mega Abomination drop a Wonder Waffle. So ranking this aftermarket part is going to be a little bit hard because it's not bad. It's actually a really good aftermarket part. It's just worse than the base version. Having the Akimbo Renettis, these are just straight out better than the full auto version of the Renettis. So we're going to rank the aftermarket part as being worse than the original. But on the tier list, I think we're going to put it in the good spot. Definitely not amazing because it does make the weapon worse. But if you're getting tired of spamming down the Renettis, I could see a use case for it. And if you're farming the weapon to get it gold and you're just farming in tier one zones, I honestly would probably run the aftermarket part just so I don't have to constantly spam down the triggers. But if you're heading to tier three, you're way better off running it akimbo for that reason right there. This thing shreds. Here's the attachments we were running on the full auto Renetti. Next up, we've got the Jack Annihilator Bull Pump Kit for the Pulmiot 762. Pros, mobility and handling, rate of fire, hit fire and tack stance spread, aim down sight speeds, cons, recoil control, bullet velocity and range, damage range, and weapon swap speed. Here we go. Slide it in. And now she's packed. And look at that. All right. Come on. Big old horde of zombies. All right. Here goes nothing. Brrr. Oh, look at that. All dead. Still 321 bullets left. This is a lot like the conversion kit for the DG58. However, you get to have the big mag size on it. You still get the fast running speed, the fast fire rate, but you don't lose the damage. You lose damage range, but in zombies, I'm killing zombies really up close and personal, so I could care less about damage range. This just seems to only be positive. It does also add quite a bit of recoil, but if you put the Jack BFB on here, there is no recoil whatsoever. For some reason, it also nerfs the swap speed, so it does take a little bit longer to swap out, but that's really the only negative is how long it takes to swap because damage range is an issue. Uh, same thing, the recoil with this aftermarket part is not an issue whatsoever. This thing just melts. It absolutely just melts everything. And it's got like a bottomless mag. It would take so long to run out of the 400 bullets you have with it. The reload speed does take a little bit of time though. Oh, did someone say Mega Abomination? Oh, you don't want to do that. So many bullets. Ooh, that's a lot of zombies. That's a lot of zombies. It doesn't care though. It doesn't care. There she blows. We need more aftermarket parts like this that really just make the gun feel like it's on steroids. Using this aftermarket part, you pretty much get all of the benefits of having an LMG without the negatives. Usually when you use an LMG, it's slow and clunky, but it has massive ammo and good damage. But now you get decent speed, also have a crazy high mag, crazy high fire rate. It's just, it's the best of both worlds. You got an LMG with all the benefits of an AR. Oh, I guess we'll test out the base version now, which is honestly just the same thing, but oh my God, immediately it's so much slower. It's so much slower. All right, that's a big horde of zombies. Yeah, this one shoots a lot slower. Oh, and because of that, it doesn't kill the zombies as fast because it does the same damage. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
Although the 400 round mag still does work regardless. Eh, it's not bad against the Mega either. Now I shouldn't be too harsh on the base version of this LMG because it's not bad. Even the base version of this weapon is very good. It's just the conversion kit makes it so much better. The rate of fire makes the time to kill so much lower. The hit fire is better. The ADS is better. The mobility and handling is better. So you're able to duck and weave out of the way. And the only negatives for running the aftermarket part is it takes longer to swap weapons. It does have more recoil, but you can have a build with it that gets rid of all that. So that doesn't matter whatsoever. The damage range falls off quicker, but in zombies, that's not going to matter. So really the only downside is you swap weapons slower, which... I don't care. If it's going to make the weapon 10 times better and you, I'm going to swap out the weapon slower, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take that aftermarket part every single day of the week. So this aftermarket part is going to have to go on the amazing tier. It's one of the best weapons in the game running this LMG with the conversion kit. This is the class setup we were using on the LMG with the conversion kit. Next up, we've got the Jack Purifier, which is an underbarrel flamethrower. Pros, pretty self-explanatory. Underbarrel flamethrower. Cons, can't be reloaded and negative ADS speed. This isn't a conversion kit, so it can be used on quite a few weapons, mainly the ARs and the battle rifles. Pack a punch, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, now we have a pack a punch flamethrower. So we can shoot our weapon, and then when we run out of ammo, we can pull this bad boy out and we can burn zombies. And um, yeah, the flamethrower is not amazing for tier three zombies. It slows them down. So if they're running at you and you're gonna have ammo, you could do this and slow them down a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's not it's not great. Oh yeah, and you can't get ammo off the ground for these. You gotta go to an ammo refill station to get your ammo. The little packets of ammo that zombies drop don't count. Only refills your weapon, not under barrel stuff. Slowly but surely. Come on, come on. You can see we have 24 bullets, but if we go here, our 24 flamethrower fuel, whatever you wanna call it, it's not bullets. But we go and pick up the ammo. Nope, it does not fill up the flamethrower. But if we go up to the ammo crate and wait seven more seconds, five, four, three, two, and boom, there we go. 300 more flamethrower fuel. Maybe it's better against bosses. Use it against a disciple. And I don't even think we can break his hand. Nope, nope, not, nope. Just a waste of time. Not going to do anything to him. Yeah, this isn't going to do anything, but we'll try it anyway. Mega abominations are weak to fire damage. So that helps us. What about popping his eye? Yeah, burn! Nope, nope, nope. Huh, I mean, it does decent damage, but you're gonna run out of ammo way before you do anything remotely good to him. And guess what? Now, if you wanna go get more ammo, you gotta head to an ammo crate. So he's gonna regen his health while you're far away. All right, let's see. Does it do anything if we just layer it in his mouth? Oh, oh, no, we, okay. Yeah, we didn't break it. So possible to take him down with a flamethrower? Yes. Practical, not in the slightest. It's pretty much stuck up there. He can't do anything. He's in a glitch spot and we're still struggling to take him out. Oh, we got this. He's, he's glitched out. He can't leave. He's like a cow. You can take him up the stairs, but he won't come down them. And all he does is keep spitting. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Yeah! Mega abomination only with a flamethrower. Definitely don't recommend it. But possible? Yeah. Now we can't really compare the flamethrower to its base form because it doesn't have one, but we can compare it to some of the other under barrels because that's what it's competing with. You can only run one of these at once and um it it doesn't it doesn't rank up whatsoever this is the underbarrel shotgun and um compare that to the flamethrower which struggled ki killing tier three zombies um this doesn't struggle at all it um it absolutely wipes the floor with all the tier three zombies so when it comes to normal zombies there's really no reason to run the flamethrower but can we use it to take out a mega abomination yes we can but it's honestly not much better than the flamethrower when it comes to taking down the mega abomination then again this mega abomination isn't glitched but he is gone. Disciple, gone. Now there is one special use the flamethrower has that does make it unique. Oh, and there it is. So if you see a guy with a shield, you can just burn right through the shield. Yep, and he's gone. Do I think it's worth using the flamethrower specifically to be able to do that? Uh, as you saw, it took forever to kill that shield guy, even though this is a maxed out pack a punched upgraded flamethrower. So yeah, it does have that ability to be able to do that, but um. I'd rather just sneak up behind him like that and just take him out the normal way because look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. In my opinion, the flamethrower is going to get the mid rank. It's fun to use. It's fun to mess around with, but there is no reason to use the flamethrower compared to the other underbarrels in the game. There's like this one. There's the grenade launcher. Uh, there's the underbarrel drill charge, which I've never used before, but just comparing it to the underbarrel shotgun, the, the underbarrel shotgun wins every time. So for that, the underbarrel flamethrower is going in the mid tier.
The next aftermarket part is the WSP Akimbo Brace Stock, which takes the Swarm SMG and allows you to Akimbo it. Pros, Akimbo, hit fire spread, and weapon swap speed, negative. Sprint to fire speed, rate of fire damage, and movement speed. Double the swarms, double the pleasure. As you can see, it does exactly what it says it does. It's the WSP Swarm, except Akimbo now, and it doesn't lock out any of the magazine attachments. So yes, you can still have the 100 round mag on the Akimbo, which is essentially a 400 round mag because now you've got 200 in the left one and 200 in the right one. So lots and lots of room for fun activities. Look at it just melt away the tier three zombies. Now, since it's a Kimbo, you would think it does double the damage, but that's not entirely true because this attachment does lower the damage and it also lowers the fire rate as well. So while using these Akimbo, you're not actually doing more damage like you think you would be. However, there's still benefits to it because you have that 200 round mag in both of your weapons, which it's bugged out now. It only shows me having one. Okay, well, that's, that's a little weird. Well, even though it doesn't say it there's actually 200 bullets in each of these it's just the left one doesn't show on screen anymore because this is a perfectly fine game with no bugs whatsoever one of the benefits of this is you can alternate the weapons you're firing so you always have bullets in a weapon at all time and you're never stuck while reloading oh even while drinking a perk cool the large magazine size also makes it really good for taking down large hordes of zombies oh we can just keep going keep going Brrr and gone and as you could guess the large ammo size also makes it really good for taking down bosses oh yeah look at that look at me and we haven't gone over the best part about these amps yet the akimbo wsp swarms are probably the single best weapon in the entire game to take down the warm boss fight and if you're going for the red worm boss fight the hardest one uh yeah using these is going to make it a lot easier having 400 bullets before you have to reload allows you to just lather damage into the worm and yeah you do run out of ammo fairly quickly but there's two ammo crates right next to the worm so that's a non-issue for the boss fight now let's take a look at the base version of the wsp swarm almost immediately you'll notice the single swarm shoots much much faster the normal version of this weapon can still shred through hordes of zombies the only issue being is that you're going to run out of ammo a little bit quicker because it shoots faster and you don't have as many bullets yep there we go so we're going to do have to do one quick reload to finish off the rest of this and yep the single version is also really good against omega abomination and completely melted this was actually quicker at taking down the mega abomination than the dual wield one that's the thing both versions of this weapon are really good but depending on what you're doing exactly depends on which version might be better i think we're just taking out single zombies the single wield version is better same thing mega abominations and small bosses single version slightly better but if you're taking out the red worm world boss oh the akimbo swarms are so nice for that and that's why I'm going to have to put this aftermarket part in the amazing tier. Because in my opinion, it's still the single best setup for taking down the worm fights. These are the attachments I was running on the Akimbo WSP Swarm. Next, we've got the XRK IPv2 conversion kit for the Core 45. Pros allows for tax stance, massive fire rate, bullet velocity and range, aiming idle stability, negatives, ADS speed, sprint to fire speed, and damage. All right, fully cover the weapon in the pack-a-punch juices, and we're out. So essentially what this aftermarket part does is it adds a binary trigger onto the weapon. So when you pull down the trigger, you shoot a bullet, and when you let go, you shoot a bullet. So every single time you pull the trigger, you're actually shooting two bullets, and if you spam it, um... Yeah, it leads to a lot of bullets being shot. And this doesn't restrict your magazine sizes. So yes, while using this aftermarket part, you can still have the big boy 40 round mag on leading to 80 bullets when packed. But all of that means nothing if it can't kill zombies fast. But luckily, yeah, this thing can absolutely shred through zombies. But unfortunately, it is single fire. So uh, you're going to be tiring out your hand quite a bit while you're shredding these zombies. All right, well, here goes nothing. The binary trigger does make it so you hit that bottom of the mag really quick. But now for the real test, can it make Abomination? All right, let's see the raw damage. Not bad, not bad. Keep on shooting, 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 keep on shooting. Oh, my hand is getting tired. How are they still coming? And there she goes. But is it better than the base version? And that's going to be a hard one because the base version, you can run a Kimbo. So you get that 80 round mag in both the left and the right version of the pistol. Now, the base version for this weapon is still single fire. It just shoots a lot slower than what it does with the binary trigger. All right, how does it hold up against a big horde of zombies? There we go. Yeah, surprisingly, when it comes to a big horde of zombies, I think I prefer the Akimbo just because you have more ammo to go around. Doesn't feel like it's killing the zombies quicker. It's just you have that dual 80 round mags and that amount of ammo is just so good for a big horde. All right, Abomination, I didn't forget about you. Now it's time. Woo. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, these things are actually like frying it a lot, a lot. Although now it's tiring out both of my hands, both my left hand and my right hand. That was kind of fire. This is another one that's kind of hard to rank because both versions are really good and I can see a reason to use both of them. The conversion kit kills zombies 
so quickly. Even in the tier three zone, it absolutely deletes zombies. The only downside is you lose an entire extra pistol. So instead of having two 80 round mags, you just have one, which you can notice it a little bit when you're taking down mega abominations. Having that extra ammo helps you take them down quicker with the akimbo version. And for large hordes of zombies, having the 160 bullets also edges ahead a little bit. But just for single zombies or just for pure DPS, this conversion kit, it, it, it melts. It absolutely melts. You just find yourself reloading more than what I would like to. And because of that one factor, I'll probably end up running the Akimbo version more often than I will the aftermarket part version. But the aftermarket part is still really, really good. And because of that, it's going to go in the amazing tier. Definitely should give it a try if you haven't already. Here's the attachments I was running on the binary version of the Core 45. The next aftermarket part is the Jack Beholder Rifle Kit, which turns the TYR pistol into a sniper. Pros allows for tack stance, a buff to bullet velocity range, aiming idle stability, and fire aim stability. Negative sprint to fire speed, ADS speed, movement speed, and sprint speed. You pack me right around. All right, there we go. This amp looks ridiculous. It's a pistol, but it's also a sniper at the same time. I don't have high hopes for this aftermarket part because to run this, yes, it becomes like a sniper pistol, but you can't run the akimbo attachment. So you lose one of the TYRs, which is one of the reasons these things were so good to begin with. So right now we're running it with snake shots, but we're also going to try it without snake shots as well. Wait. Okay, this thing still one shot headshots when you put this aftermarket part on, which is actually really good because they recently nerfed the TYRs and these are no longer a one shot kill. Ooh. Okay, I might have been wrong about this. I might have been wrong about this. This might be the way to actually run the TYR after nerf. And I still wouldn't say it's amazing just because there's way other weapons we already showed off in this video. The five bullets and reload is what really ruins this. If it had 10 bullets before you had to reload, I could see it being a little bit better than this. Oh my God, it's so brutal. It's, uh, I have bad aim. It, if you aren't hitting your shots, if you're missing a bunch of shots like I just did, that's when this thing is going to be absolutely terrible. All right, armored zombie at this range. Can we... Ooh, we, that was decent range. All right, headshot him. Gone. This thing destroys armored zombies, which I know the TYR used to do that, but uh, you'll see what I mean when we go to the normal version of this weapon. Uh, the TYR is nothing like what it used to be. But the real question is, does it do anything against a mega abomination? Not in love with the pure wall damage it's doing? Yeah. Whoo. That's going to take a lot of shots. Oh, this is brutal. Please open your eye. There's not even a point of shooting you if you're not going to open your eye. And we're out of ammo. <gasps> Please, ammo, need. All right, this has been miserable. And I'm going to run out of ammo again. Oh, again, I'm running out of ammo. Down she goes. That's probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had taking down a Mega Abomination. Absolutely awful. Now let's try the aftermarket part without snake shot. I doubt this will be any better, but it's worth a shot. Okay, still one shots dogs. Oh, does it not one shot armored zombies anymore? Well, that was not a headshot. So normal zombies, a one-shot headshot. Armored zombies, it now takes two bullets to the head to take them out. We do get more range though. So we are able to take zombies from a long range because it's no longer a shotgun. It is like an actual sniper sniper. This should have crazy range. But losing that one tap headshot on armored zombies. Whew, so now it's going to take two bullets. And keep in mind, you only have five bullets before you reload. So even if you hit both of your bullets perfectly, you can only take out two armored zombies. And then, and then you have to reload. And that's if you hit all of your bullets without missing. Bosses? Maybe bosses? Oh, no. All right, five bullets. Reload. Ah! Oh. All right, let's snipe. Come on, zombie. You're not going to know what hits you. Oh. Oh. Ah! Ah! Yep, the whole sniping thing is going so great for us. Oh, we got the dog. Yeah, so even when you're trying to snipe with it, you get constant zombies close range that are trying to attack you. What about the disciple? Let's see if we can snipe this disciple. Oh, we broke his mask. Yeah, that's going to take a lot of shots. He doesn't see us. We could, we could take him out stealthily. Ah, we, well, we turned. It counts. It counts. I think I already know the answer to this question, but uh, we're going to try it against a mega abomination. All right. Can you pop an eye quick? Oh my God. The five bullets aren't even enough to pop an eye. So base damage is shooting its body. Very weak. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, we got one. Where's he, where'd he go? Hello? I hear him. All that damage from him just to disappear. Oh, and now he's back with full health. Not like we wasted enough time trying to damage him. He disappeared again. He disappeared again. At this point, I, I think the game's just trying to put me out of my misery because, uh, spoiler alert, uh, this is even worse than the aftermarket part with Snake Shot. It's one of the worst weapons I think I've ever tried to take down the Mega Abomination with. Um, and I'm not going to find a third one. If he keeps despawning, I'm just going to let the game the game do what it wants because uh, I, I, I've already... I think I've got the point across. This is terrible for the Megas. And finally, let's compare it to the normal version of the TYR. This time we have a Kimbo and we've got Snake Shot on it. Now, these things used to be amazing and one of the best weapons in the entire game, but unfortunately they did get nerfed and they are so much worse now. 
you can see here that um yeah it takes a lot of shots to kill armored zombies where it used to be one Oh, if we shoot both shots in the head out of an armored zombie, we still one-shot them. All right, armored zombie, line them up in the head. And yeah, we're still able to take down an armored zombie if we shoot both bullets at once in the head. And that's the thing. If it's taking both bullets to kill, you know, a zombie, and it takes two bullets to hit the armored zombies in the head, you're better off just running the aftermarket part where it only takes one to shoot them in the head. Because at least with that, you get a lot more range because these have a lot less range than the aftermarket part version. And you can also ADS to make sure you're hitting that headshot. So you make sure you get that one shot kill. Oh, well, okay, reload. Okay, if we're, if we're in a corner with these, we are, we're pretty much screwed. Yeah, these are such a former shell of what these weapons used to be. Ah! <laughs> We can't even just stay in a corner killing zombies quick enough. Okay, there's Omega. Oh, he's going to spit for us right on command. So we broke his face. However, I think if we're not breaking and popping his mouth, I, I don't think it's going to be very good. All right, so shooting him normally, abysmal damage. Yeah, we're just going to have to rely on popping the eyes. And we're out of bullets. Can't go too far away or he's going to despawn. Don't even want to use zombies to drop me ammo, please. Oh, he's spitting. He's spitting. And gone. Another miserable experience. Honestly, it's really sad using these, knowing how good they used to be and how they perform now. <sighs> Rip TYRs. Now to rank the aftermarket part, I do think the best way to run this now is to run the TYR with the aftermarket part sniper kit and put snake shots on it. I feel like this is better than running the Akimbo just because you still get that one-shot headshot potential and you get it at a way higher range. Oh, and there's zombies. However, it still has the biggest downside of having to reload every five shots so i i think overall i don't know if i want to put this in the mid tier or the good tier because it is satisfying to get that one shot headshot on zombies but there's weapons that have 100 round mags that only take a couple bullets to the head and you could just wipe out an entire horde whereas this thing would take forever to take out hordes so for that I'm going to have to put the aftermarket part in the mid category, but I still think it's worth unlocking and using just because it's so satisfying to one tap an armored zombie in the face. Like, oh, well, just like, boop. here's the class setup we were using on the TYR with the rifle kit and snake shots. And now that it's all said and done, here is the finalized tier list. Is this a perfect tier list? No, not really. Depending on your own personal play style, some of these are going to switch around a little bit. But using this, let's find the absolute worst aftermarket part and the absolute best. Uh, starting with the worst one, this is a super easy decision. After using all the aftermarket parts in the game, there was one that was clearly way worse than all the other ones. That being the MCW 6.8 full auto conversion kit. And uh, if you use all these yourself, uh, I'm pretty sure you'd come to the same conclusion. This takes a mediocre weapon and just makes it way worse. Uh, the MCW with this aftermarket part, definitely one of the top five worst weapons to use in all of Modern Warfare Zombies. There's only a few weapons I can think of that are gonna be worse than it taking into the tier three zone. Now, when we talk about the absolute best aftermarket part, this is where things get a little bit harder to decide. There's two of these that I really like, the Jack Annihilator Bull Pump Kit for the LMG and the WSP Akimbo Brace Stock for the SMG. One of these is really good at just clearing out zombies in the tier three zone, whereas the other one's really good against fighting the Red Worm. If I had to choose between the two of these, I'd probably go with the Akimbo Brace Stock just because it's an absolute monster when it comes to fighting the Red Worm World boss fight. But yeah, we're going to be getting more aftermarket parts in the near future. So if you want to see me test out those as well, when those come out, make sure to unlock that subscribe button. Let me know out of all the aftermarket parts, which one is your personal favorite. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace. Lego unlocked. It's Lego unlocked. It's going to unlock all these camels